Hey, what's up? My name is Mo and this is Procedure Rust in Blender. So first of all, I want to say I put the link to this Blender file into the description so you can download it and look at the node setup and really dissect it. But if you want to understand this node setup a little bit better, and possibly make your own procedural materials in Blender. Keep watching because I'm going to explain you exactly what I did there and how this works. Basically there are only three shaders involved. The metal, the red paint and the rust. The reason why this material might seem a little bit complex at first is because of the masks. There are actually only two masks involved and what they do is they basically mix these three shaders with one another and create that rusted weathered material that we want to create so let's break it down a bit and see how it's done okay so let's start over again and construct this material from the beginning so first what i did was uh, created a glossy note because that is our base material, our metal. Pretty reflective, so I keep the roughness quite low. And then I uh, duplicate that and make it red. And that's going to be our paint with a little bit more roughness. And what we are going to do now is basically we're going to add a mix node that is under shader, mix, and we have to mix those two in a way that creates this uh, texture on the edges. And the most important note for making this kind of weathering effect in Blender is the uh, note that's under input and geometry. Because the geometry node contains this uh, outlet here that says pointiness. And that is basically the value that lets you make a mask around the edges of an object. So that's what we're going to use. But as you can see, if we plug it into the mix shader right now, nothing is happening because we first have to clamp the values to the right amount to get that edge to show up and the way we do that is by adding another node that's called uh, color ramp it's under converter color ramp and we just insert it here so now we can clamp this uh, pointiness node oh. and it's kind of fiddly you have to get that sweet spot here where the uh, shader is just overlapping enough because it's you have to really pinch it together and then you can see you have something like this but now as you can see we have to add some texture to that because as it is now it looks pretty uh, pretty unrealistic and there's no real grain to it so what we're going to do next is we will add texture to it and the way we do that is by going to texture moose graph texture and that is one of my favorite textures because it can create this cool um, rust effect if you know what to uh, type into this because uh, it's quite fiddly and you have to get the right value i'm going to tell you the exact values now so scale you want to type in 14 details 6.8 dimensions are 0 0.2 luminosity is 1.6 offset is 0 and a grain is 0 0.4 so let's actually get that in and if we plug that into our 
mix shader, we can already see we have a texture that kind of resembles rust. But what we have to do now is we have to get a texture input because if we want to apply this texture to other models, we are better off if we use a texture input. And that is into input, texture coordinates, and then use the object outlet and plug it into vector. So that basically um, maps it procedurally around the object and adapts the size to the object itself. So that is really handy if you're creating procedural materials. Uh, the other thing is now we have to mix this mask with the pointness one. And the way we do that is by adding a math node under converter math. And now I'm going to plug the moose graph texture in to the first value and the uh, pointness value to the second value here and click multiply. And then we're going to plug that outlet into the mix shader. And what we can see is now we have combined these two textures and made kind of a, a rusty effect here. You kind of get the logic behind this. You just create these mask and masks and textures and can combine them via these uh, math nodes and create a mask between different shaders and that's basically how you make procedural materials. But this is not finished still. As you can see there, it's not quite looking like our uh, example here, but uh, the way I added a little bit more realism was a smaller rim and we have to add a little bit more weathering around the edges. So we just uh, are going to select our pointness map and duplicate it by hitting shift D. And then we will add this texture to the previous one. First we're gonna plug that into our factor value so we can actually see it. And what I'm doing now is I'm clamping it even more so that we get a, a tighter texture. And what I actually will do is I copy that so that we have a, a new color ramp so that we can adjust it better because I can't see anything if those pins are so close together. So can pinch that together in, in one side or in the other. I'm going to do this here and then we are going to combine it. So copy the math node, plug the outlet value of the first one into the second one and plug this thing in there and into our mix node. And now we actually have to change uh, the mode to maximum. And now you can see we have the weathering effect on the edge and also the little texture around it. So uh, the next thing I'm going to add is a bump map to the paint so that it looks a little bit more like actual paint because now it's just a flat shader with no like surface detail to it. And the way we're going to add that texture is by going to texture, noise texture, and we're also going to need a texture coordinate node and just plug in object again to vector. So as you can see here, object to vector. We need under vector a bump map. So plug the noise texture into the height and this normal channel of the bump map into the normal channel of the shader. And you can see we have some surface detail. But of course this is way too strong and I will give you the um, ex exact values for this texture as well. And they are scale 200, uh, detail R2 and distortion is actually zero. So yeah, that's what I did. And I also toned down the strength uh, quite a bit. So zero point. 12 was the value in here and the displacement was 0 0.06 actually, yeah. So that tones down the 
the bump map effect a little bit and gives it just a little bit of a grain. And now we actually have to create another shader and that is for the rust. And the way I did that, I just copied the paint shader basically with all the uh, noise texture and bump map nodes. So just select them where you're holding shift and then shift D to copy them. And then we're going to select a more rusty color like this uh, desaturated brown here. Now we have to create the second mask because I want to create this effect of the rust kind of coming under and out of the paint. So we have to use our original mask and clamp it a little bit so that it becomes a little narrower and that will be the mask for our rust shader. So let's select everything by hitting B and copy this whole node setup. So as I said we have to clamp this mask again and then it's of course done with the color ramp node which is under color no under converter uh, color ramp and we get the output of this whole thing into that so actually put it into the factor value of our mix node here way down there so uh, the way we're going to clamp this mask is not by just moving these two pins we're actually going to create uh, another pin and that is done by hitting this little plus icon here and then it creates a new pin so we're going to move that new one over here and set this color to black because we only want the small rim as you can see now on the rendering where the rust actually is so now we can dial in our rust make it a little bit narrow on this side keep it like this and now we can add another mix shader here and try to combine all these layers again we have the paint shader the metal shader and the rust shader and these are our two masks here we have the one outlet here and one output here. The first one is going in our original one. All good. And now the second one of our rust is going to in the factor value of this second mix shader. And then we're going to grab our rust here and plug it into the shader node. And now we have created uh, a simple and easy procedural shader with rust on the edges so of course you can finesse it a little bit and play with a lot of textures and add many layers to this uh, layer tree and yeah I hope this tutorial really helped you to understand this method of creating materials in blender a little bit better because it's really powerful and it's also a lot of fun if you understand or what these notes do so okay stay tuned for my next video check out my other blender slash substance painted tutorial on my mesh character paul and yeah keep up the good work Yeah, I finally switched to Blender 2.8. How about that?